May I have a word, sir? Um, yes, Otis, but only if it's not dangerous or illegal. Understood, sir. I will send the package back, sir. Hey, here's the thing. I recently read a few articles describing the so-called A2 slash AD Russian doctrine. Well, there is nothing like an anti-access slash area denial doctrine in Russian military thinking. In fact, Russian military thinking is the epitome of the principle of the fact that the offense is the best defense. The Russian idea of defense is making the opponent incapable of offense. In case of a generalized conflict, and let's hope it's not going to happen, the Russians are not going to sit under the umbrella of their surface-to-air systems or behind their coastal anti-ship systems and just be worn off by the opponents. The Russian aerospace forces include the Russian Air Force and the surface-to-air defenses and they both work in integration. Their mission is to protect the Russian airspace, the strategic forces and any other valuable asset in the country. We focus on the surface-to-air component first. The system in use are well-known names in the West. We have the S-400, the S-300, the S-350, all long-range and mobile, and protected at short range by other systems like the Panzer, for example. Mind that the aerospace forces do not necessarily protect the army because the army has its own versions of the same system and it is protecting itself. Russian planners are well aware that the NATO could start a large-scale operation with a massive counter-aviation strike. They will combine long-range weapons like cruise missiles with attacks with stealth aircraft. In both cases, due to low observability or the particular flight profile, the detection range and the effective range are greatly reduced. This actually means that the range of the A2AD bubble is actually too small to be a real bubble. The systems will still be capable of an area defense, but the area will be smaller than usually reported. The Russian approach to counter the NATO doctrine is a layered defense based on different missiles with different seekers. In fact, all the S something systems that have been deployed can use several different types of weapons, each one with its own seeker. In this way, what could be effective against one munition may not be effective against the other. And this is another example of how variety increases resilience, which is something that we have already covered on this channel. The other element to counter NATO doctrine is redundancy. And no, not that type of redundancy. Analysts have good reason to believe that the Russian expression integrated air defense refers to the fact that targeting information can be shared among different batteries or different sensors and different common centers. The NATO doctrine focuses on attacking the sensors, that is the radars, but the destruction of the radar may not actually render a group of launchers useless because they could still get their targeting data from other redundant sensors or other batteries nearby. So what would be the role of the Russian Air Force in this scenario? Analysts suspect that it is going to fill the gaps between different systems and it will patrol the areas that are too large to be covered with surface-to-air systems. The Russian Air Force suffers from a scarcity of airborne early warning systems. However, this is compensated by the presence of ground-based long-range systems that have no equivalent in Western inventories. These are strategic low-frequency systems that have over the horizon capability. There are several technologies that can be used for OTH radars, but this will be the subject of a different video in the future maybe. What is important now is to understand that this system can provide an early warning against stealth aircraft at long range. Granted, they won't allow to target anything, but they may be good enough 
to provide a tactical picture of the battle space and to allocate the defender's resources to oppose the attacker. Nobody expects this to be an easy task, but the Russians have developed for at least a couple of decades a consistent counter-stealth strategy. NATO forces tend to have a rather methodical approach when it comes to fighting a war. The first step is neutralizing the air defenses. The second step is neutralizing the opponent's air forces attacking the infrastructure and winning the air battle. The rationale for this very structured approach is to have the ground forces to operate under the umbrella of the air superiority. In this way, their mission won't be disrupted by the opponent's air force. We have seen this pattern applied since Desert Storm in the 90s. However, this was possible only because all the opponents in the last 30 years were objectively inferior, either technologically or numerically. The coalition had safe remote air bases and a lot of friendly airspace around the opponent. Well, this may not be the case with a confrontation with the Russians. The Russians filled several long-range systems and they are always developing new ones. For example, and a famous one, we have the family of the Calibre cruise missiles. <laughs> Analysts expect that these will be used as soon as possible to degrade the opponent's capability to safely operate near the Russian airspace. I also suspect that the Russian Air Force won't be as cautious as the Western Air Forces and they will put their machines and their pilots in harm's way for the same purpose. This is probably going to be dangerous and costly, but if this is going to stop the sequence of the NATO operation and is going to put the alliance or the coalition better on the back foot, I'm sure it will be done. So while the coalition forces will be focused on acquiring their superiority before starting the ground operations, it's quite likely that the Russians will try to do everything at the same time. Well, this is exactly the opposite of a bubble strategy. To execute this strategy, the Russians in the last two decades have extensively modernized their air force and their equipment. They have introduced new aircraft and several improved variants of older aircraft. And this process is still going on. And if you want to learn more, please click on the videos that are going to appear beside me. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you there.